Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and is by user Not Our Mother. My sister, 17 female and I, 17 male, finally found out the real reason our parents got divorced. How can we deal with the feelings of hatred we have toward our mother? We don't really have anybody else to talk to about this, so we were hoping maybe we could get some advice and second opinions here. Our parents got divorced when we were around 7 years old. The memories are kind of blurry, but I do remember that one day dad was in the house with us and the next he had his things packed and told us he was leaving. As little kids we were sad but eventually got over it as we were able to see both parents often and they did everything they could to make us happy. I am not going to talk trash about our mother, but she has been in and out of relationships so much we usually can't even remember the names of her exes after 4 months. We also have two younger siblings, 7 and 8, but we know they're only our half-siblings. Our mom has always told us that the relationship with my dad, their problems and why they divorced was none of our business and what's in the past is in the past. We never dared to ask. But recently, we heard her talking to some of her friends. They all get together and catch up at least once a month about her and dad. I don't know if they forgot we were up there or just didn't realize how loud they were being, but we heard all of it. Mom was telling them how when dad had his surgery, he was going through an illness but is fully recovered now. He was weak, depressed and useless and she had another man that was giving her what she wanted the whole time. The whole conversation is too long to repeat, but she kept on insulting him and calling him some cruel names. My sister started crying and left to go to her room. I went to comfort her, but she was pretty shaken at some of the things she had heard. She told me that she hated mom and now that she knew the real reason why they divorced, she didn't want anything else to do with her. I understand how she's feeling and I'm furious about it as well, but I'm also confused about how we should handle this or even if we have a right to be mad because it was so many years ago. Honestly, I don't see her in the same way anymore and I guess I feel kind of betrayed, as dramatic as that sounds, because of how she treated dad. I know exactly how my sister is feeling and I feel like if we don't control it, we're just going to create more drama that we don't need. Well OP, I'd think you are totally in your right to be angry at your mom. It might have happened years ago, but you found out now. And by this, I mean that it doesn't matter when it happened, it's affecting you now and you are dealing with the feelings today. And if your sister doesn't want anything else to do with your mom, then she's absolutely in the right to feel that way and to actually act on it. Is there any way that maybe you guys can go stay with your dad? Does your mom have custody? I mean, you guys are 17 years old, so I would think you get to choose where you live, right? And even though, yes, technically she has a point that whatever happened in their relationship is their business, well, their business actually impacted you emotionally, so you guys do have a say, and if you don't want to be with your mom, then you should be able to do just that, and she doesn't get to complain about it. And honestly, don't worry about creating more drama. This is all on your mom. She's the one that generated all of this for cheating on a man that was lying in bed sick. So again, I'd inquire about maybe moving in with your dad and just dealing with your feelings over there away from your mom if that's what you want. Just don't worry about how she's feeling regarding this whole thing and worry about you and your sister. I'm guessing your dad never told you guys anything because he didn't want to impact negatively the relationship you guys have with your mom. But that train's already left the station. And what do you guys think about all of this? What do you think OP should do? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. BookerBurger69 says, As you grow up you will start to realize that the people you used to admire and see as role models can sometimes be awful, awful people. I used to admire my grandpa so much, but now that I'm an adult, he doesn't use a filter around me anymore and I've come to learn that he's extremely racist, homophobic and has enabled my abusive mother my whole life. It's hard to let go of that pristine image I once had of him, but my personal values and morals trump any sort of relationship I could have with him, if that makes sense. 
You have a choice now whether to go no contact with your mother or just limited contact. I strongly advise against just ignoring what she said about your father and continuing life as normal. You don't have to have a relationship with her. You can just finish out school and then move out when you're 18 or move in with your father now. Also, if you decide to confront her about what she said, prepare yourself for her excuses and lies that she will use to deflect guilt off of herself. Stand your ground. I know it sucks so, so much, but this is a part of growing up. Some people are liars and cheaters and awful in general, and sometimes these people are the ones you thought would never be like that. You will get through this though, and you will end up okay. Good luck. Smiley face. Mega Mose says, this is a discussion you definitely need to have with your mother. She's going to play the what's in the past card, but that's just a way for her to avoid dealing with an issue she's already avoided dealing with for 10 years. Don't let her do that. It may be in the past for her, but it's not for you because she never gave you the information you needed to process it. Find out the facts from her point of view, then find out the facts from your dad's point of view. Be cool and rational. Try not to get too emotional until you've heard everything you need to hear. It's entirely possible that she was a good mother but a bad wife. That happens, and that's a factor you and your sister have to weigh when figuring out how you want to proceed in your relationship with her. Enough Show Nuff says, I've gone through something similar as well. Your dad has probably daydreamed about being able to tell you the truth, but he knew it was for the best not to. He had to put on a brave face, move out of his house, not see his kids full time, all the while not being able to tell you the reason why. For 10 years. He's probably both hoped for and dreaded you finding out the truth. Now that you have, you know what to do. Make him a part of your life going forward. Cut her out. Give him back those 10 years. Additional information from Opie's comments. She wasn't a horrible mother in an abusive sense. I'm not trying to make her out to be. But like I said, she pays a lot of attention to her relationships. So we've never really been all that close to her. She used to be an exotic dancer and probably does something else in that line of work now as she's always going out wearing skimpy outfits and bringing people home. I've never really been that emotional about her not being affectionate or around a lot because I know that's just how some people are. My sister feels differently. She's very sensitive about it. She says what she means however she wants to say it, but if it's personal, she usually waits until we're out of earshot. And the only reason we got over it was because we were living on some BS lie. It's almost being like an ongoing thing with her, finding out more and more things about her throughout the years, but this took the cake. Our dad is not perfect, but at least he didn't cheat, and we know that for a fact. He was in so much pain and so ill, he had to have our aunt come and help him do basic things, cook and help him wash up, etc. Because our mom was too busy going to work, cheating. He was very ill and spent most of the time in bed. I think my sister is more upset by the fact that she has no remorse and years after is still trying to get us to like all her random boyfriends. It's just starting to get old. There's a lot I know I couldn't put into the post because I didn't want it to be too long but our mother has not changed. I'm not trying to trash her but I'm also not going to put her on a pedestal and make excuses for her because she popped us out. I want to make things better between us, but all this stuff is just reminding me why I strongly dislike her in the first place. Anyway, my sister and I are going over to our dad's in about an hour or so and are going to bring it up with him. I don't know about talking to our mom about it. She'll probably get mad. I'm not sure I'll believe her right now anyway, to be honest. Maybe sometime later when we're not so worked up, we'll attempt to talk to her. Okay, well, I believe the community helped OP a little bit, gave him some direction, and OP gave us a lot more context as to his relationship with his mom and everything that happened with his dad. So now, let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. We posted here a week or so ago about the problems we were having with our parents, and things kind of have been resolved some since then, so I thought I'd update. The same day that we posted the topic, we went over to our dad's house. After a lot of stalling and such, we never did up asking him about it on that day since he was extremely happy and we didn't want to ruin that. So we waited and when we saw him again on Thursday, my sister just let it out then. He didn't automatically say anything at first, then he asked us how we felt. 
My sister told him how she was feeling and I did as well and then he just got up and went to make a call after that. He didn't mention anything else about it until later on that day when he took us home and that's when our mother came out. Usually she just stays inside and we let ourselves in and I'm pretty sure this is the first time in years they've been close to each other. We could instantly feel the tension between them but despite this dad still kept a cool head. All he said was, I would appreciate it if you wouldn't discuss those things in that way in front of our children. There was a little back and forth between them, basically with our mother telling him to screw off, she can talk about what she wants and whatever. Then our dad left and when we went inside, all hell broke loose. She went off on my sister for being nosy and intruding on her adult conversation and told her to keep her mouth shut about anything she says about dad because then he'll start telling us things that aren't true. My sister was not having any of it that night and they yelled at each other for at least an hour. It got so bad I had to literally drag her away into her room, but unfortunately our mom followed us in there. Then that's when she said something that I think pretty much gave us our answer. And so what if I wanted to keep my needs met? You'd turn out to do the same floozy thing if you aren't satisfied, so F off. She rambled for a minute about human needs and sexuality and then slammed the door. The next morning she tried to act like nothing had happened and tried to talk, but neither of us really responded. Later on that day we had to sneak over to dad's as she forbid us to go. We asked him a straightforward question and we said he didn't have to tell us if he thought it wasn't our business. How did you find out mom was cheating? He responded that she had brought someone home on a day that my sister and I were at school and he could literally hear them having sex in the house. Afterward, she just came into his room and flat out told him she wanted a divorce, that she couldn't do this sick thing anymore. And the thing that really struck both me and my sister is that after he was better and back to normal, she asked him to get back together and he said no. I guess that may be a reason why she still has something against him. We've discovered so much and it's still a lot to take in. My sister is more on the emotional side so it affects her a little more. But just like a lot of other things, I know that we'll get over the hurt we feel over this eventually, however long that'll be. For our dad mostly, but also because our mother has done so much emotional damage throughout our lives. Not counting this, but it does take the cake for our decision. We're currently trying to decide if we even want to continue talking to her when we are older. Right now, we've been staying with our dad and we'll probably be here for a while. To end this on maybe a little happier note, our father did tell us that he has been with a woman for a little over a year now and he's thinking about introducing us soon. Thank you everyone for your advice in our previous post. Well, OP, I can't say it's an outright positive update because of all the hell that you guys have been through, but I think it's a good thing that you guys now know the real reason why your mom and dad divorced. As a side note, I think it says a lot about the type of people your parents are that your dad has waited over a year to introduce you to one girlfriend because he wants to protect you guys and your mom decided, whatever, she'll just parade the string of boyfriends in front of you that you guys can't even remember their names. So at this point, I'm just gonna say it's a good thing that you guys are staying with your dad now. Hopefully you guys can build a stronger relationship now that the truth is out there. Take care, OP, and thank you so much for sharing. Now, let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user SumoNinja17. New hire misses most of the first three weeks of work then uses me as a reference. Let's call her Alana. She came in and applied for a job and when I looked at her resume and application, I realized she knew some of my old neighborhood friends and schoolmates. She interviewed well, so I gave her a job. Told her to be in on Monday at 9am. Monday morning, she is not in. She doesn't call and is a no-show. Tuesday, no call, no show. I had now written her off. Wednesday, she shows up at about noon. Claims she was in her basement Sunday night and her brother was working out and he accidentally knocked her out during his intense workout. She claimed her doctor told her she had a concussion and she should stay home for a couple of days. She had no doctor's note, no marks on her head, but thinking her story was so off the wall it could almost be true. I let her come to work the next day. She worked Thursday and Friday. We paid at the end of every week and I gave her a check Friday. I also did not deduct the days she missed. 
She came to me and asked about the full paycheck. I told her we were a family business and realized people had lives outside work. We tried to make sure people knew they were appreciated and tried to take care of our people. She teared up and thanked me and said we could count on her. She worked the next full week and I did. Okay, she seemed to fit in. Seemed. The third week she showed up Monday, but Tuesday was another no show no call. We did not hear from her for over two weeks. When she finally showed up, her story was the stuff of legends. She claimed her husband had forged divorce papers a couple of years previous. Thinking she was divorced, she moved back into her parents' house. She claimed her ex-husband was at her parents' house when she got home the last night she worked. He told her he made up the divorce and the paperwork was phony, so they were still married and he wanted to get back together. She claims she refused and he kidnapped her. She said it took her a couple of days to get away from him. She wanted to come to work the next day. She did not call the police and he wasn't arrested. There was nothing in the papers or on the news about any of this. She was not hurt, thank God. She asked if I believed her. I did not, but told her that I really needed someone I could count on coming in reliably every day. I gave her a paycheck for one week, she had worked one day, and told her I wished her good luck. I had already replaced her and her replacement was one of the best employees we ever had. Now, here's the malicious compliance. The next month, I get a phone message from someone from XXX Company called for a reference for Alana. As my secretary is handing me the message, she's laughing at the look on my face. I asked if she was kidding and she said she was not. She said she got a call from a man saying he was the owner of a company in the area and he asked about Alana. Then, my secretary asked if she could listen in on the call. She was a pistol. She then goes and gets my partner and tells him I am going to call and give Alana a reference. Now he's in my office laughing too. I call the guy and we make some small talk. I tell him what we do and he tells me what he wants Alana to do for him. I tactfully avoided answering any of his questions about Alana directly. I think he was beginning to suspect something. Remember folks, employers can get into a ton of trouble for bad references. He finally asked my opinion of Alana and what I said was, if you can get Alana to work for you, you will be very lucky. He heard what I said and how I said it. He repeated that back to me exactly as I said it. All my words were the right ones. It was my tone and intonation that got my point across. He thanked me and hung up. Alana comes into the office a couple of days later. She looked mad but is trying to be pleasant. She told me she is having trouble finding a job and mentioned she has used me as a reference. She wanted to know if anyone from XXX Company had called me. She knew they did. She told me she really wanted the job at XXX Company. I told her I had been called and that I told the guy he'd be lucky to get her to work for him. My secretary confirmed that's what I told him. She told her she was right next during the whole conversation. Alana smiled and thanked me and headed to the door. She said she wondered why she was having so much trouble getting a job. She asked if she could continue to use me as a reference and I told her absolutely. I also told her I'd tell everyone the same thing, that any employer would be lucky if they can get you to work for them. She walked away smiling, happy and clueless. Well, Obeeb, you definitely know how to get your point across properly. Thank you so much for sharing. That was great. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.